Judy, are you ready to start? I'm ready. Okay, seven o'clock. Let's call this meeting of the Sports Planning Commission to order. Judy, you want to call the roll, please? Indeed. Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Stiles. Here. Lozell. Here. Abraham. Here. Also present is planning and zoning person Denise Swinger. I can never remember what your exact title is. Planning and zoning. Star. Uh, Denise, Denise Swinger. Swinger. Is it? Zoning administrator. I guess the purpose is here. Zoning administrator. She's the designated the zoning administrator. And. Uh, Quite obviously, a uh, village solicitor, Chris Connor. All right, thanks. Uh, so we have an agenda, um, fairly brief, short, rather. We can talk about science, I guess, as long as we like. Um, anyone want to add or delete anything off of this or rearrange anything? Uh, if not, we'll press on to the review of the minutes. Uh, does anyone have any comments on the first page of the minutes? I have, a, I have a question, Judy, on that last paragraph. Yes. Zoning code, is this supposed to be, it seems like that's truncated. Uh, where are above you your looking? number two bullet. It's or is that truncated. supposed to be? Do you have it on long paper? Yeah. Or is that supposed to be a colon for the two points below it? I have, you know, you're, right, it's darn truncated. Okay. I'll, che I'll check it, because you're right, that does cut off. I think it was, has been applied retroactively or something like that. No other portion of the zoning code. But you're, you're correct. I'll make sure that that's, in fact, it and fill that in. I think it's one of Chris's comments. Uh, page two. Page three. Page four. No other changes. We have a motion to accept these as amended. So move. Second. Don't leave me hanging. Second. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I need to abstain. Okay. Since I was That's right. You were absent. Get that, Judy? Got it. Thank you. Uh, we have no communications, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Council reports? Uh, just, just a couple things. Uh, we're moving forward with the uh, solar uh, array at uh, Glass Farm. Uh, the village manager has been directed to uh, move forward with the, uh, the choice of the committee. We also had a uh, presentation from uh, the Glen folks to uh, pour, uh, purchase the uh, uh, eastern sector of the uh, Sutton Farm, which I believe that they said it was already designated as the enforcement of that green space. Other than that, no. Good. Thanks. Um, this is the time for citizens' comments. If you have, if there's anyone that has a comment for the Planning Commission that's not on the agenda, um, has to address the Commission. You guys okay? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, so no citizen comments. Uh, then we have a public hearing, and so the public hearing is that section 128408 that we weren't sure if it had been publicly noticed or not. We would have had it, kind of had it, we had a hearing anyway, just in case it was noticed, but apparently it wasn't, so. I thought there was a little bit of confusion and we were saying 1258.01 which was noticed, um, so we did notice 1260.04, 1258.01, and 1470.02. A 1284 which was the definitions of a private swimming pool spa was not. So we just need to have a public hearing and uh, vote on that. Okay, so that definition is the uh, on that second page of our packet. Um, and I know we've discussed it. Um, is there any further discussion on this? 
If not, we'll open the public hearing. Um, anyone in the public have any questions or comments or discussion about uh, 128408 definition? If not, then we'll close the public hearing. And with that, do we have a motion to um, accept this definition and forward it on to council for their review and approval? So move. Second. Uh, Judy, you want to take a vote? Voice yes. Come on. Sims? Yes. Pelzell? Yes. Stiles? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Green? Yes. All right. Very good. So that leaves our agenda the sign ordinance review. Um, and I guess to recall, if you recall, uh, Patty and Denise and I had a conversation probably a month or more ago um, about how this uh, existing text was fairly affordable. There's a lot of things downtown, which I think uh, we've been providing some examples, just don't come close to fitting in what we have as a current ordinance. Um, and I um, promised Patty that I would bring it back to the Planning Commission as a, a work item to see if we want to make changes or what we want to do, if anything. So, do you want to talk about your review? Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I just well, I went ahead and I laid the format of this report out based on each section. Um, if we want to go through it that way, I don't know if that would be best. Um, I have a couple questions sure. here first. Uh, you sh showed us the pictures of signs that um, are not permitted by it. And what I'm wondering, because this, this was changed in what, 2013. Mm -hmm. So were these things permitted prior to that and changes were made so that now they're not permitted? I, I didn't go and check all of those, uh, so I don't know. I mean, some of them have to get permission. I, I'm not really sure. Um, that section of the code uh, in 2013 was, I think, primarily done, a lot of it was done by a staff person, Tamara Ennis, and I don't know if she had taken pieces from other things and how much involvement there was. Okay. But I mean, I, I imagine, you know, I would guess that at some point there was maybe variances on some of the heights and things, or maybe they were allowed. I don't know. And so when this was passed in 2013, were major changes made then? It doesn't look like it. Okay. From my reading of <clears throat> the former sign table that um, Judy sent us, it it looks like the same kinds of like zone restrictions, like permitted only in what is it B two, etc. Um, not really reading into it in depth. It looks like it's. Fairly similar. Is the one that you sent the one prior to 2013, or was it one, the one from 2013? It was the one from 2013. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't remember a whole lot of discussion on signs. Oh, on we signs. didn't get oh, yeah, that's what it, I thought. Yeah. So was, what, what, yeah. So what you're seeing, Rose, was the the one before John made his change. Oh, so I thought was, wait, in 2014. I thought that's what I asked for, so that's why I was confused. So that's, I mean, yeah. the question is still out there, but I can say that by the time the sign section got, got around to, there was not a lot of energy spent. Yeah, we were pretty much done um, with a lot of the whole zoning review. Okay, so, because I, I guess I'm trying to figure out that, so there are a lot of them that aren't um, really permitted by Oh, but they're grandfathered in. Okay, so, they're yeah, grandfathered in, so they're okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, they're okay. So we're looking really towards the future. So anybody who right. has a sign. Wait, how okay. are they grandfathered in? I don't understand. They're there. Yeah. The zoning code changed, so well, they So were they were before. permitted? Well, I don't know. So I mean that would be a question I'd have to go back. If they weren't permitted, I have no documentation of that. Then in essence they're not. But I haven't delved that far into it. Okay. You know, but but um, there's a general clause in here that just says essentially anything that was permitted for the New code was passed. This grandfather is an accepted use. Right. And I did see that. 
And so we're assuming that everything they <coughs> met the signage. Yeah. So the, the question they then going forward though is is are these do we want to make these permitted uses? Some that, that are not. Do we want to allow some of them, not others? And I think that's kind of more the this, this questions before us. Yeah, the other thing too is um, <clears throat> according to the new zoning code, if uh, <clears throat> for example, if something if they change the sign out or alter them in any way, then um, if it's not permitted, that wouldn't be allowed. So like never sign. Correct. Right. So you want to go through your review? I mean, go, I mean, go through. I mean, it was just <coughs> things that I asked. Yeah, excuse me. Um, I just uh, <coughs> brought up the uh, definition just so we kept that in mind as we went through this. Um, in terms of it's to promote economic development. Um, and provide reasonable identification for businesses and not intended to serve as a means of advertising. Um, there's, uh, <clears throat> under the 128408 definitions, it um, <clears throat> specifically spells out all of these different signs, not all of which are allowed. And if you go a little bit further, um, signs that do not require permits under 126603, they're not defined under definitions, except for three of them, directional, political, and real estate. So do should they be under definitions or should we take those three that are in definitions out? Just keeping it flowing. These are exempt from a permit. That's one thing I'm questioning. Um, I didn't have any concern over the um, definitions of the signs that we have in the, under that section, nor did I have any concerns about the general provisions of the science structure and placement. I did have a few questions, though, relating to um, how we define a freestanding ground sign. Um, we, we define a ground sign, we define a um, Pole sign is not allowed. The ground the ground sign is pretty has is pretty specific, but it also has a base. And then there is a freestanding sign. It's it's a little bit confusing. I mean, it's it you know uh, in some cases uh, a, a freestanding sign is just a sign that has two legs and it has the sign on it, but in our definition here, the ground sign, it actually has a base. Like perhaps it has like a brick uh, area that's built around it. But there's no mention that freestanding signs are allowed in the, if you, if you go, I think the best thing we could do here is look at our chart. The chart is a table 126605, and I went ahead and just typed in at the top, ground wall, gateway, development sign, home occupation, business center sign, an awning or canopy, a marquee or a window sign. And then it tells you what's permitted, what's not permitted, and what is permitted if it's a non-residential use. Okay. So 
if you look at business one, which is the central business district, you're allowed to have a wall sign, an awning or canopy sign, a mark here, a window sign. That's it. So all of the pictures that I gave, which are ground signs or freestanding signs, wouldn't be permitted. So that's the King's Yard sign. And the shops of Yellow Springs. There's no pole signs allowed anywhere. No pole signs are allowed anywhere. Okay. And um, a pole sign is a freestanding. This is just from another municipality. A freestanding sign in excess of six feet is considered a pole sign, and we don't allow pole signs anywhere. They're prohibited. In twelve sixty six so four prohibited signs. That's yes. Where that's the only reference to both signs. Is there a definition of both? Yeah. 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 signs, the, so gave a few examples in there, not all of them. You're right, there's a few on the south of the town. What was the future sign at both time? Yeah. yeah. Well. It says pulls or braces. I mean, wouldn't that be like a lot of the business center sign? Yeah, where's that? Also, where's that? In the definition of pole sign, it says elevated above the ground, no poles or braces, and not attached to any building or other structure. No, that's a that's what they call a uh, blade sign. Um, oh, it says it's a projecting sign. Pole sign, it's a freestanding sign. sign that is elevated above the ground on poles or braces and not attached to any building or other structure. So that's the definition of a pole sign, and it's not allowed anywhere. Yeah. So well, that's it. We found one. I <laughs> that's one that's in there. That's a definition, and we don't allow it. Okay. Okay. So let me make a note on that one. And where did, did you just find that, or is this you just found that's in the definition? It's, it's on page three. Thirteen. Adam found it. It's, it's, it's also very similar to the. On page two, the last one, nine, the freestanding sign is exactly the same. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. Or which rests on yeah. the ground. Sign. Yeah, until the foundation is only the difference. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be raised off the ground. It's not the difference. I mean, if we allow business, I mean, all of our business center signs are pole signs. Um, they're not allowed in the district that they're in anyway, but like they do, all, they're also not allowed because they're pole signs. Like I think pole signs is a, obviously a big issue. Well, I think the, like the King's Yard sign, I think that's probably a ground sign, not a pole sign. It's not allowed either, so. So a freestanding sign, I think, <coughs> is the same as a ground sign, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the separate distinctions between a ground sign and a freestanding sign in our definitions. And I don't know if we should have that. 
I mean, again? the difference, like, if you're, if you're, if there's a difference in permit, like, permittability, then yes, but there isn't. Right? Is one allowed somewhere and the other is not allowed in the same place? Between the ground and the pole? No, ground and freestanding, the whole mm -hmm. thing. What type, zone type is, sign type is that? Because it, it says, freestanding sign and a freestanding sign. supported on poles or braces or which rests on the ground or on a foundation resting on the ground, which is the same as a base. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't. And. Is it? Freestanding sign isn't even in here. So, so, so can we just, can we just delete freestanding sign from the definition if it's not listed at all and it's... Well, where whatever. is it listed? Under definitions. No, anywhere else. Oh, anywhere, no. Yeah, it's not. Else. So, I guess... But I, but I kind of feel like the, the definition of freestanding kind of needs to be blended in with ground right. so that yeah. people could have the choice of right. having a base or not. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Um, so, are we, as well as making this, I mean, I know that John did a lot of work as to, like, making this more understandable. Is there a reason why the definitions have to be separate from the tables, you know, signs, especially signs not requiring a permit, like, you know, just add in another couple lines like where where it's not defined just put the definition right there you know like so you don't have to look at two separate things for you know, just accessibility to the public for us. is that a thing that we do all right say it again so you're talking about the size not required permits i'm talking honestly that i would like to see i I think that, one, there's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't need to be in here and can be combined, obviously. Yeah. But also, go. I, I would argue for definitions to be not separate from the like, legislation, like adding the definitions when you're talking about whether or not it's allowed or not allowed. Hmm. Like so what the regulations we, are on it. Okay, so so perhaps only putting the definitions, only putting under definitions those things that we are permitting, and under prohibited, perhaps define those prohibitions a little bit more, so that it's clearly understood for somebody when you say, um, when you say, for example, what was the one? The blue <coughs> sign that's prohibited. Maybe explain what you mean by that. Yeah, like, like, you should be able to find the sign that you're trying to do. You see the definition, you see how big it's supposed to be, where it's allowed, you know, like, I, I just, and, and everything and, and, and what, re, what permits you need for it in one place, like, well, that's not something we need, just a definition section. There's a lot of, because there's definitions scattered throughout this, we can maybe combine them. There is a definition. Well, it's also yeah, like organizing it by sign type. Except that, like except that, yeah, sign is not required permits, but all included in the definitions. Mm -hmm. They're defined in this section. Yeah. If, they, and if, if the rest of it was like that, though, you just, if, if it was organized by the sign type, you could go to the sign type and then see where it's allowed, all the other stuff. It was organized by the table like that. And oh, instead like, of the definition it, section. It would run more ease of access, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying, like, the table's helpful, though. Yeah, the table Absolutely. is really helpful. It's it's like, helpful. have, like, you know, have a signs not requiring permit, you know, address sign, and the requirements. Right? And the definition of what that is, if we're defining it, are we? Is there a. There is an event. No, Because no, no, you don't really need one, right? Um, and then for signs not allowed, right? 
like there's this whole other list A through I um, they could just include the definitions of those things similarly to the signs not requiring the permit. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Just kind of yeah. take those steps. Yeah. That makes sense. And then they have a section of signs requiring permits. And then and the permitted signs, right, <coughs> that are requiring permits have the same type of thing. You know, like, why, you know, why is that not defined there? Because there's so many things that, I don't know if it's complicated. Just a suggestion, but you might want to pass that along to another meeting, just because I don't know, I think you could go for a long time about whether you're going to permit or not permit. Once that sort of stuff gets cleared up, then if you wanted to look at now how are we going to put these into definitions in a table, that's a whole different thing that you have not noticed the public hearing on. Okay. So, totally legitimate, yeah. but you're going to want to notice that separately and kind of do that as a separate issue. Is this noticed as a public hearing or is this as a work session? This is just a work session. That's a just needing to discuss. Okay. True. Okay. And, and you can discuss. I mean, that's not an issue, but you might. Yeah. But at least at the at least at the next meeting, well, I can you know I can show you based on what we're talking about here, how it is, um, and striking through and, and what how we do want it laid out. Yeah. Well, and it's but you touched on an important point though, and that is, we have certain things that are prohibited now. Do we want to leave those prohibited? Do we want to incorporate incorporate those back into this? And primarily, I mean, the, the two things that stand out for me is the is, is the ground sign and the pole sign right. mm -hmm. in the simple business district. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering what uh, damage these signs are doing to our economy. <laughs> I guess my question is: Is there a problem with these signs? If there aren't, then why do we have these? It feels, I mean, I started to feel that way when we did the zoning code, but mm -hmm. all these rules, and it's sort of like, you know, how necessary. Yeah, what, was the, what was the intention behind some of those? So yeah, I mean, well, Judith's point, point is, 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 what is the is, point of all of these rules? I don't, right. I don't get it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, people have generally used relative to judgment. Uh, I, and, you know, there's been room for people to express their individuality, and, and it's made for, uh, you know, there hasn't been a lot of problems, though. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, this hasn't been enforced, and what? And it hasn't been enforced anyway, but why would it be? <laughs> and have there been any complaints about any of them? Uh, yeah, there have been some complaints. There have been. In which ones have there been complaints about? Well, not these in particular. Okay. But there's some mm -hmm. outside signs in terms of uh, closeness to the sidewalk. necessary because
because if somebody has to go through and look at every sign to see if they can put up the sign the, they want. The table now um, on page 12, 12, 12 has, that, has that at the top. I mean, it, we didn't have that before. This is the new, yeah, I was like one of the things yeah. Sean added to it. And the other thing, too, is um, to your point a little bit, Judith, um, we live in a neighborhood where somebody's planning to put up a great big sign. It's residential. Granted, we're RC all the way up Dayton, I think. But um, that sign's going to be mighty big if it's put up, if it's completed. And so sometimes you need signs <laughs> to help your neighbors get along a little bit. You need regulations as well. There, we, don't, we have a lot of businesses that are in residential areas. And so that's why on the chart, like there's those little um, ask, like star asterisks there where they are permitted, but only for non-residential. And then you follow the, the guidelines for that. Um, Where are the guidelines for the? Well, I mean, it depends on what it is. If it's a ground sign, then you go to the chart for a type A ground sign. And in a residen residential district, you're allowed to have one sign per street frontage. Uh, a maximum square footage of um, 24 square feet, uh, minimum 10 feet from a lot line, 10 feet from all other lot lines, and then um, it has a little bit more of a definition for like a, um, if you go back to the definitions mm -hmm. of that, which is important, I, I will say, it is important to have the definitions in there. It explains um, in more detail how you measure it. Right. Size and yeah. So subject. when you say 24 square feet, it's just not particularly the face of it. It could, you know, it may or may not be the poles that it sits on, and those are all factored in. Um, the other thing is, like, uh, in downtown, you're allowed to have internal lit signs, but you're not allowed to have that in the general business district, but you have Dollar General that's lit up. And I had the example of the other automotive place that has an internal lit sign. So. But, and the other side of that coin, though, is that if you, if you say that pole signs are permitted in the central business district, that means every business on the street can have a pole sign with lights in front of peaches. Or, and, and so, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to happen necessarily, but it, it means there's no way to um, legally, you know, stop them from doing, someone from doing that if, if the partner store decides they want to put up a base sign. Um, so I mean, that's the other side of it. Well, if they have a place to, I mean, that you can't, I mean, you could split up downtown into several zones, right? Like have a special sign district. <laughs> but what other way to regulate the number of pole signs within one district? I mean, could only issue five per five pole sign permits for like this license or something. Yeah. <laughs> we could maybe make it a conditional type of a permit if it's over six feet. I mean what conditions could you put something? Well it had to come before planning commission and said that, you know, but and putting sign is it don't we have some restrictions on putting signs on sidewalks that you can't no, you have to be yeah. back. You have to be so that itself would be back and down be right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But if you, if, you, if you say no pole signs, then you don't make it. That's true. And, right. and, and, I, and I think the intent was uh, to not have downtown area now become inundated with. But if they change the their signs. signs, the existing ones now, then they have, they're not allowed. No one can allow them. Right. They're just not allowed. That's true. If they alter it, then. Right. 
Yeah. So, so if someone else bought peaches, for example, they have to pay to take the sign down. If that if peaches would get damaged, you know, and they have to completely you, you change. Got damaged. Or maybe a new business goes in and wants right. to. Mm -hmm. If they exactly. change the words on it. Right. Yeah. The That's way the definition right. here, it yeah. wouldn't be. So I guess that's the question, though. Is, is how do things look now? Do you want to? How do you want them to look? How and what are you willing to do to make that happen? Really? I mean, are, is it? Are we okay with pole signs? Are we not? Um, is council okay with them or not? I mean, it's it's. Uh, I can kind of see why we let this drop at the end. I can, I can understand why. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there anything that we could um, do what we do with like the swimming pools and maybe just like talk to other smaller, similar towns and areas and see how they handle their regulations? I, I looked at other places and we need to just focus on our own. Yeah, it's probably just a mess of They're all over the place and a lot, but a lot of them are very similar. Right. I mean, no flashing, blinking, moving, you know. Right. Kinds of things that they prohibit. But. So if we leave it the way it is right now, those that have pole signs can continue them because they're grandfathered in. And but if anything would happen, the business would change or whatever, they could not put up another one. If, if they, they took the existing one down. down. They yeah. take it down. Yeah. If they if they took it down, but if they didn't take it down, they could just leave it correct. Okay. They could well, leave um, it blank. So but like ground signs, what about ground I, I would like us to be able to at least have ground signs downtown because there are places where could have it. It's not going to be right in the right in that area sandwiched in by Tom's Market. That little stretch. There isn't any place, but there are some other areas. I mean, they have to be ten feet from the lot line yeah. and ten feet from all other lot lines. I mean, and so they, they expanded the central business district to go up a little bit further by the library. I just think that we should consider that mm -hmm. as being um, allowed because we do have those setback conditions. And we have a we have a clear vision triangle um, requirement. Make sure that people's back out of the driveway. That it's not going to get any. You know, I, I think you're actually coming around to what the thinking was, as much thinking as there was when the zoning code was put together, which was what was the vision for the way that downtown Yellow Springs should look. Nobody wanted, and we certainly can't go to a chainsaw and take out the pole sign. So then, uh, how would you? How does it ideally look 15, 20, 30 years from now? But you're right. If you don't permit ground signs, then you get to stand up there with a flag. Is the Mills I mean, Hotel then sign we really don't have much left? No. That would be allowed. Well, it's not allowed. And so what happens if it's not allowed and they put it up? What's happened? Well, I mean, I'd have to do something about it, but I mean. Right, right now, it's not. It's not uh, and that's one, of the, that's one of the examples that brought this topic back mm -hmm. around. It's like. Uh, with Patty was. Yeah, you're asking. You got a little sign. So, so maybe you yeah. could ask for a permit? Uh, he came and talked to you. Yeah, right. he came and talked to us. He so said we were going to talk about this anyway, so he didn't go too far with it. He'd already had it made. Oh. But I mean, but you would order to him to take it down. That's if, what if, if we're not going to allow it, I mean, if we're not going to allow ground signs, but that's a perfect example of yeah of one that we not should. that I'm against. And the so that one's a ground sign. Yeah. And it's not permitted in business district one. One. Right. And so I personally think. I feel differently about the pole signs and the ground signs. I think we should allow the ground signs. And I'm okay with the pole signs slowly withering away. And maybe in 50 years there won't be any. Not that I'll be around in those. But well, and, they, and it may change. Another right. group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, I'm actually, actually, I, 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 I kind of agree with you there. I think, I think keeping, keeping it as it is not permitted. Um, and then changing the ground signs, I guess. And if you change the ground sides, would you want those permitted or do you want those conditional? Probably, probably conditional is going to be another top whatever we're talking about, right? Well, they would have requirements already. Right. I think that they could be permitted unless 
they're wanting a variance of the, like, I don't have 10 feet back. I don't have, mm -hmm. right. then, then I think they would. Then they have to come in mm -hmm. and, and yes. give a variance. But they and then that would also give us an opportunity for the, like, the speedway signs or what, whatever goes up where BP was. If they want something over six feet, we can make that conditional. Mm -hmm. What about business center signs? Because they're only allowed in. They're not allowed downtown either. I, I, to me, I mean, in it's, the same, it's the same grounds. And it's just that you have. Is it the King's Yard sign a business center sign, essentially? Yeah. Anyway, uh, do you want to jump in here? Well, I want to ask two questions. I think there's language in here now that says on your pole signs that are defunct. They have to come down. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a good example of following now where it hasn't. It hasn't come right. down. But that's an entrance to the village. And probably would be a good thing to do. That was one thing I wanted to ask. And then the other is, what's the difference in the square footage on ground sign versus the business? In 148, 125. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you might, I mean, the ground the sign. The business center would be, that's true. It might be better just in terms of uh, yeah. site visibility and everything, just to keep it a little calmer in the downtown versus 48. That's pretty big. And a ground sign, if you can still, there's nothing in the language that doesn't, that says you can't advertise multiple things on it, so it can still follow yeah. the ground sign you might write. Ours at Millworks is a ground sign. It's 25 square feet, and we can't have anything. That's 25 where the language is and everything, so the little decorative things that some people have are the things that would hang down to the ground. They have to be within the 25. Uh, at least that's what it was when you put that up. It's predated the zone. Is Midwest allowed? The Midwest sign? That's a PUD district. I'm sure that they were.
permitted. I can see another was just coming in competing with peaches and I mean, how do you people decide about that, you know, making that argument at least, you know, that they're allowed to have it, you know, we're not. I think it's still being an issue, but um, I mean, personally, I just don't like both, I don't, I don't like both sides, you know, so that's, that's just where I don't think it's necessarily it looks good, you know, that's where, where I, I, I agree with you otherwise, you know, we're restricting things, uh, but it's already restricted as far as, I don't think there's a, I mean, the, the chance there's going to be a ton of poll signs popping up anyways, and the ones that are there are still for you, and, and I, I'm fine, that's why I'm fine with yeah. these this. See, see, I look at it as, you know, if, if I eliminate the poll sign, do, do they have another option to, to be able to display their name or whatever? Yeah. And I say yes, and I don't, I, I don't look at it being mm -hmm. prohibited or disadvantaged to a new person coming in yeah. that they won't be able to display their name or whatever. Oh. I would have a problem if that is the only way that they can display. I mean, if those signs are allowed at ground level, I kind of feel like raising them up is like better for, I mean, not, you know, like if it were the same size at ground level, if it were a ground sign, that would be more detrimental and they would be allowed to do that, you know, like that would be, I mean, like if peaches or, if, you know, like that, you know, if it's on a corner, for example, like that could um, block line of sight around corners and, you know, could be. If, 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 if they weren't allowed to have that whole sign, I don't see how they could even do a ground sign based on the way they have their parking lot area. Well, they would be they able to change their parking lot they area. Might they might, yeah, they have to do that. Um, they could have a, a sign on the building. Which they do. So, yeah. I mean, like, Speedway, for example. You know, like... But you know, the other gas station doesn't have a whole sign. Because I, I had wondered about right. that, and then looked and I thought, Okay, they're able to advertise without it. Yeah, they've got some. Yeah, and, and if, if I remember correctly, they changed. They, they went from a post to a ground sign. If I, if I can remember back that mm -hmm. I can't that yeah. But it seems like to me the post <laughs> sign was out more toward the curve and then one day I'm looking and say, hey, just suck it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's if I can remember back. Because it, 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 before it became BPs, it was uh, a, a, a full service, you know, you could get your body repaired and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that pre-teens. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so the other, the other one that I'm just concerned about is the lighting. Mm -hmm. Lighting in B2 is not allowed, but yet we do have it, and so. That's the internally lit, right? Mm -hmm. So Village Automotive, is, is that the only example? No, no there's B2. Dollar General. Dollar well, General? Yeah, I'm talking B2. B2, B2. B2 is that, oh, yeah, is the yeah, strip yeah. down, yeah. More towards the mm -hmm. And are there any, have there ever been any complaints about no. internally lit? Because I know, I mean, but that's, I haven't been here that long. I haven't been there. may have been yeah. complaints back mm -hmm. in the day. No, but I, you know, me personally, I prefer this versus uh, having a sign up and then you got a lot of other lights hanging on the building to to show the, the sign. I, you know, and, you know, uh, I just, I don't see problem with this one or, and, and I think, uh, I would generally have to come before us because I think they had two signs. You know, the one on the mm -hmm. street and the one on the building. And I I don't see that as you know, it's not it's not blanking, it's what's the not rotating or something. What's like the functional difference between in, in inside illumination and exterior illumination? What's it, to me the exterior is when you got the cold sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's yeah. Like, for the well, design, I mean for ground signs you you're we, you're not allowed to there's somewhere in here where you can't like have all the lights that project from the ground going up. Right, right, right. Yes, right. it has to be set up so it's like maybe in the top of it and it 
projects. But like as far as like Village on the Hood of a sign, for example, for example, if it was just like a wooden sign with lights like hanging from the top of the sign onto it and it's still lit up at night, what's the difference between that and having an internal illumination? Why is the internal illumination? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, there was no. I don't, I don't know. know if there's any reason as to why. I don't know if people were thinking Las Vegas and you know, right, right, right. bright neon, you know, everywhere. I don't know. But um, but it's in the code. It should be something that, I mean, we're only talking about B1 and B2. Um, or we have businesses that. It's only what prohibited B1 also? No. Whatever they mean. No, it's just, just B2. B2. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't make sense. So, I, mean, yeah, I, 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 I think so. That was, could that have been because it's close to residential areas? That's, that's oh, not that. That's not that. Well, I was thinking of, you know, the uh, BP and, and uh, not BP, but Village Automotive and Dollar General be more out you know, in the residential area of the and people were afraid that some of them kept Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know where that historically came from, but I think that it should be the same as Yeah, it should be the same either way, I think. I, I don't see what should Um, maybe this is too off topic, but um, have you had any official complaints about the temporary window sign above the bank in the window? Have you noticed that? There was a discussion about it. It's a Jesus sign. It says Jesus on it. And um, I, I do think that it obscures more than 25% of the window area. Just thinking about these. Is that a residential or is that like a business upstairs? It's a. Owned by. It's rented out. They rented out to a group, I know. Yeah. It's not a residential. And who is it again? The loved US bank. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't get on traffic. Oh, is that just my phone around and took pictures? Oh my gosh. There's so many. Yeah, I don't understand. I'm just sort of. Strings. Somebody sign inside their window that they. I mean, it's a, it's a, no, thing, it's, it's a, hang that they lit up. And so, I mean, I, I would say you were going to get severely into the weeds if you start going down that I, path. I was mm -hmm. under the impression that um, window signs are internal. Mm -hmm. Window signs affixed to the glass on the outside or the inside of a window. And the, the sign is a form of religious expression. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, religious and symbols, religious sign religious says, religious um, right. so. shall not be considered a sign unless accompanied by text. What do you mean by text? Yeah. Like the name of a business or something that perhaps, or it was advertising something? I, 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 uh, I'm I, i sorry. I, I, don't know. I probably shouldn't have brought it up at all. But it, I, I mean, like, I think, I think it, it would be not allowed. <laughs> Actually, it looks like it wouldn't be allowed because it's not, doesn't, um, it doesn't, it, I mean, maybe it's, religious, but I don't know that much about constitutional law. If a sign says Jesus. Well, okay. I could ask the person who's placed the sign. Yeah. But I think it's a general proposition. I think the logical conclusion is that it's probably got some reli religious connotation to it. And that brings in different layers of, see, the, we can regulate commercial speech. Mm -hmm. But when you get into religion and political speech, very, very, very difficult to regulate, if at all. But it depends on how it's being done. Um, and that's a, a very complicated area of law. But yeah. So I say this is a very general proposition. <laughs> um, and I don't think that 
that's something we're necessarily, unless you want to go there, I mean, that's the body, the planning commission, we're, we're prepared to go to that level yet. <laughs> no, no thanks. <laughs> Um, there's a couple more things I just want to run over before we end this. I'll go back and try to come up with something out of the discussion. Um, in, under 126608 inspection and maintenance, it goes into quite a lot of detail about the Green County building official. Um, and I know that when um, we permit a sign from a zoning perspective, I always tell people they need to then go on to Green County building regulations um, because they want to look at, make sure that they're building it with proper materials. And also, um, if there's any electrical inspections, if it is lit up. <clears throat> but this seems to go into really great detail about the Green County building official. And I don't know why it does in this, and it doesn't really anywhere else. Like in I just kind of wondered if this was maybe cut and pasted and then accidentally not edited, or I don't know. Yeah, but this is like a different regulation. Well, but, but your permitting is done by the county, isn't it? I mean, your, your, your building permits, who does yes. that? Yeah. yeah. I think that that, that was the intention. Yeah. 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 It's a, I, there's a certain logic to that, whether or not it needs to necessarily go into that detail. And I think this also gets to the point of where there's some of this, and I, there may be other places in the code, but it gives authority then for the, the, the village, you know, the zoning administrator to perhaps require removal of a sign that could be hazardous uh, or decrepit. So I guess my confusion, my confusion was if Green County comes along and says it's unsafe, do they have the authority then to have it removed, or they ask, do they come back to us and ask us to do that? I don't. It would seem to me that if, if the, the property owner will put on notice that there's been a determination made by the county that the sign was unsafe, and the property owner were unwilling to act upon that. Then it would be up to the village zoning administrator relying upon the determination of the county to move forward. So I would see it as yeah. a village action in that instance. Once it's being identified. Do the county inspectors coordinate with us though when they have issues? I, think, I would think. I, 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 never, have, I don't know. I've never had it done. Yeah, my, I mean, my understanding yeah. was they did in the past. But, but. Yeah, I thought they did too. I, think, I assume they do. I, mean, yeah. I, was, I always thought there was pretty decent communication. Oh, I mean, there is. I mean, they won't like. Um, they, if somebody goes, if anybody bypasses us, the county will tell them, you got to come here first. And we do have that relationship, definitely. Um, so, do, so do people have an awareness of this with the county? I wonder if it needs to well, be. Well, I don't think they do. And I, and should I there be something then on the sign permit? Well, that's uh, what I was wondering. A check off for that. add something. So that they know that that's the next yeah, step. That's a good it. idea. Right. Yeah, because I don't think people realize that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Pretty much. So. It sounds like we've made a little progress here. Yeah. And um, we can do the definition thing. Or can you, can you understand that? that? Yeah, that brings me to Can I say time. something about yeah. the definitions? Um, the, the, in the absence of a definition within the context of the zoning code, words are given their plain and ordinary meaning. So that, that's the legal standard. So when considering whether or not a term needs to be defined, Consider it in the context of, of what I would call common sense and logic. If we all know what it means, it may not need to be defined. If there is confusion as to what it means, then we may need to discuss whether or not a definition is appropriate. And so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, then the second piece of that is um, when talking about what, having that separate, separate definitional section, um, 
from my perspective, and I say this as a lawyer, but that, that's easy for me because I know that there's a definitional section, and while it may be kind of difficult sometimes to go back and forth, at least it's contained in one place. And so once a person looks at the code, they can tend to remember that. Now, one thing that could be done, it would seem to me, is there many times in, in our, our uh, administrative code and our charter business, there can be references to other sections that say C definitional section at 1268, so that would aid the reader knowing that there's another section to go to, which would be, I think, easier than simply inserting all of those definitions that you might want in there. Just okay. something to think about. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with the, a reference to what you're talking about when you talk about things. So can you clarify one more time for me with how you want to see this with the, with the, where do you want me to combine, where do you want me to not? Because oh, yes. it sounds like the suggestion is to leave it sort of the way that it is. Yes, with a, with except that we also have, I think this is part of Rose's point, I mean, Rose, I don't want to speak for you, but I think there was definitions in like signs not required permits, there's definitions there also yeah. that aren't included in the definition section. Yeah, I mean, if I kind of feel like if we're going to have a separate definition section, there's got going to be a lot more words added. That, I mean, like, so like I don't really see another way of doing, I don't know, I also yeah, would so like to mean. see in permitted signs where they're not allowed, you know, like instead of all other zones, you know, like a ground sign, it says location all other zones, minimum 10 feet from the lot line, from front lot line, that's not allowed, you know, or it wasn't allowed, you know, in district. Isn't that what's telling us over here? Yes, but it doesn't, I feel like one could go to this and think that they're following the regulation, you know. Do you mean these tables? Like? Yeah. Okay. The, in permitted signs. Oh, so you're saying it doesn't sh tell us in 1266.05 where they're permitted, even though they talk about all the setbacks and all the other stuff. Yeah. What they kind of do here, though. It doesn't say where they aren't. It doesn't say where they aren't. It says all other zones. Well, all other zones in which it's permitted. That was right. kind of a confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the the zones that are not permitted. It's all okay. other zones. Um, and it's basically where it is permitted. It's this for that, it's this for that, and it's this for any other ones, maybe you have three of them. Subject to the requirements of yeah. the table. I, okay. Yeah. I just, I feel like there's some way that this could be more accessible. That's, I, I don't know what it would look like, and maybe I'm wrong. No, but I, I, no, I hear what you're saying. Well, why don't we take a look at what the changes are? Just look at it, and I think that is is a since this is still in the work session phase. Right. Look, one, I think that as a general sense, are there any definitions that you think need something more specific? And there's probably going to be some other cleanup that needs to be done once you see what it looks like. And I think that if you will just say to Denise, clean it up, and obviously she'll look at it, send it to me as well. And we'll look at it, and, and, and what I think everybody here is really saying is we want the zoning code, or the, the sign code here, to be easily understood. And currently you're expressing reservations that it is not easily understood, or as easily understood as it could be. Yeah. So let, let's work towards that, and, and I, I just kind of feel like, Denise, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've kind of got a good sense of, of what I, I do. the I, I, looking for. Yeah, I think I do. I just, I just, I, I'm still just a little bit hung up on under definitions. Do you really want to have under definitions things that are obsolete? No. Meaning, I mean, when I go to the definitions, I mean, it, that, that definition helps me <coughs> clarify some things that I'm getting ready to let somebody do. <coughs> but 
for that. So I don't know if we need to have uh, the definition of a balloon sign under definitions if it's prohibited. Yeah. Um, well, it's something you want to find. I, I, I actually think that you do. I think you need to I add yellow permitted in Yellow Springs or something like that. So the barber pole? No, like. I so like the idea of having a section with definitions that say not permitted. By the definition. And then list those so that you're not putting those definitions under the things that are permitted. Plus, you're having a separate section in the definitions. Permitted versus not permitted. Oh, that's a great idea. Versus exempt. And so and, and you know. could reference where the rank, where the requirements are on those definitions instead of the other way around. Instead of where the requirements are, referring back to the definition. Right, so what what so we're looking at section. <laughs> well, well so if you go back to just twelve six six oh one okay. or one of, under the okay. under definitions. Under right. definitions, yeah. I think what Rose is saying is. is you have all these that are permitted, but also have a section of definitions for exempt. Oh, okay. And Break another section for prohibited. Yeah. Because you have prohibited under here. So somebody looking at it, you know, might just say, oh, okay, it's under here, everything's permitted. Yeah. And we're saying, break it out. And these would be permitted. The ones you already listed. And if, and if the table could, of where things are permitted and not permitted, could move to the beginning, maybe like right after definitions. Yeah, I'm also looking at the talking about. Yeah, I agree. That that maybe to move that up. Because that's sort of telling you where everything's permitted. And right now it's sort of like after. That so, Sorry. What now? This we're saying to move this up towards the, the beginning. It shows. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just a little bit of the definitions. Here, double notes. Maybe I'll send that. That's the summary table. That's not even the code, right? Six, six. Well, that's the no, that's only not. place that it says that you know pole sign or not pole signs, but you know where ground signs aren't permitted. Right, so where would it, so you, you would like that chart added to the to the code? Yes, early on. Early on. And do you have a do you have a place where you would like to see it? Do you think it makes sense to insert it? I put it right after the purpose. Um, let's see. And you go to. And I'm, but I but I don't know what's. You go to my report. Okay. See, it's right now it's under two six six point zero five. So you would put it before the definitions even. Put it after the definition. After purpose. purpose. And then general provisions, and then go to permitted, and then signs not requiring, and then prohibited. Well, then the table. You put the table before or after the definition. I don't care. I don't care either. I think. I, well. Much. We'll, we'll figure out a place to put it. Yeah, yeah the definitions. Yeah, definitions yeah. are clearly in a different place right. anyway. Right. Um, so. Uh, so we will put the add add the chart. I I would also just like to put on record that balloons and strings of light bulbs. I have no reason. I see no reason why they should be permitted in the village. Balloons are not permitted. You mean why they should be? They're not, they're not permitted right now. No. And you, we're saying balloons is, should be permitted. Uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. And also strings of light bulbs. So people who put out like birthday Christmas balloons, Christmas lights. <laughs> lights and things like that are doing something good with it. I mean, Floyd's, you know, yes. always has balloons out. There have been a lot of complaints about balloons. <laughs> well, they are in our neighborhood. They are, yeah. Yeah. But they're not there anymore. So, but when they were, the corner cut them were really problem. Um, mm -hmm. And the lights. There's a lot of light pollution on that corner. Mm -hmm. There's neon signs at the, at the laundromat. Flashes open. 
they don't need to do that because they're open 24 to 7. Yeah. But it flashes. That light bounces off the corner cone into the residences. You know. So there is that 50 foot line, but I don't know who's got to measure 50 feet. But technically, that's like the wow. Yeah, no, the flashing is in. You can have an open sign. That's well, neon, but it shouldn't be flashing. I know. But it has been for. Right, before this zoning code was um, and it's you know it's bad enough that we have to put shutters on the inside of the house and bedrooms, but, you know. But there's a lot of street lights too. I mean, there's other. But when you have businesses that are doing a lot of corner code has a lot of lights too. Did uh, a lot of signage, and they had all the balloons. <laughs> which didn't have flags, and, you know, it really got to be a lot. You know, I think one, one of the things that the reality, forget about what the code says, but the reality on some of those types of signs tend to be temporary in nature. The realtor wants to put up the balloons to advertise something, and so by the time you even get around to the enforcement of the code, they're gone anyway. And so I think that there's a recognition that you, you, you don't want to just carte blanche allow it, but if people want to do it, then it's gone in a certain amount of time. You just kind of so accept it. Just have it in there, so allow them to put I, I think, that, I think it that's the sense. Yeah. Um, because it, 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 the fear being that if you just said everything was okay, and then maybe everybody did it, then you really have a, an unintended consequence. But, but my suggestion would be, because we, the definitional part really is really getting into the nuts and bolts, that if Denise and I can work on just restructuring and, 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 and reframing something that's clear and easy, then we can come back and then start to look at individual definitions and how that plays into the vision of what the commission has. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. That helps. Anyone else have any comments before we wrap this up? Judith, do you want to? I was just thinking that in these places where business is next to residential, when these kind of conflicts happen, um, I, I, just, I just thought the question came to my mind because I know in a residential area where a street light was you know, shining into someone's bedroom where the village, you know, they, they asked the village to do something and they put up a little screen thing actually up on the light there. But anyway, I just wondered if there are these kind of problems, if there's a way that Denise, you know, the village is able yeah. to kind of intervene because a lot of times people don't realize the impact that they're having on their, you know, and if they did, they might well be willing to change it or something like that without, so I mean, just a thought. Yeah, I mean, I've tried to, I've pointed that out for non-residential, in a residential neighborhood when they say, and then we're gonna, have lights that are going to point up, and it's like, no, you're going to have to do a redesign and have the lights in the thing that shines down on it, so it doesn't spill. Right. Okay, any more discussion on this until we see something else? I have a question. Sure. Just a model building, you know, we have a lot of buildings and no works. Mm -hmm. For each one of those, Considered a primary building or a principal building? I think they are. Aren't they? They're individual businesses. No, I had someone that wanted to put up. It's a, an I one, you know. It's an I one. You know, it's kind of. I mean, you could do directional signs, but it's in the thing. You can do like a. They can do like a directional sign if it has a logo. Logo. Um, but then they can maybe put up if they're like a wall sign. Um, but they. Was, so there was one person that came and wanted to put a sign out front and in the front on the street and he wasn't permitted because there's a business center sign there that his that name could be included in that but put a, put a brown sign say in front of the building that they're occupying well um it's, it's i mean it's yeah we i know we talked there wasn't really any great location for that so we talked about a, a sign on the wall that's, the wall that people yeah, could see. The wall you're talking about is a small wall, unfortunately. So yeah. you're not going to get get a very big sign up there because you know the wall you want to look at is a small wall. They have a longer wall, but 
people wouldn't see it. You know, that's such a I problem. Know. It's kind of weird. And in, in, in yeah. that particular case, there was a uh, uh, where the sign wanted to be. Then I believe there was um, a, like a ballast and a uh, some sort of village meter. Well, there's not a village meter, or but something there that the Vectron, was Vectron, Vectron, something that yeah, maybe, would yeah. would make it maybe an issue for the utility company to. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. But was, you wouldn't you wouldn't permit a ground sign in front of a building, a separate building that somebody's occupying is what I'm asking you. I didn't, you? I did in that case. I, 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 I had said that it'd be better to put it on a wall and maybe yeah. have a directional sign, a small directional sign yeah. that, you know, yeah. with your logo pointing yeah. that the doors over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, if they have a small wall, though, they really have a small sign, and they want to have a bigger sign, basically. How do they, how do they do that, or how do they get a variance? Do you allow a variance on signs, or would you, you know, say instead of the five percent of that particular wall, twenty-five percent or thirty percent, would you do something like that? But you'd have to take it to the planning board to do it. Is that correct? Um. Or they could project the sign too. I think you can do a projectile sign too. The BZA yeah. does variance. Okay, okay. Yeah. We'd have to take for those folks, or they would have to. It's not BZA, like or like he said, they could do he, they could do a projecting sign that comes off the wall. Good. What's the width of that? You're only allowed to go out a couple of feet, aren't you, on that projecting sign? Uh, it's um, defined, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why it's so projecting out from a wall not more than three feet. three feet so they could actually do a hanging they could Eight send it out mm -hmm. yeah now what about the length of it? eight that, square feet maximum eight square feet so it could be three by three almost three yeah. by three mm -hmm. maybe two and a half by three and then still be projecting out yeah. yeah. Okay. Or you just put, they just have, it's just a bracket. They yeah. call them blade signs. Or okay. Yeah, well, they'd have to measure the wall and decide what's the But best. those actually are really a very good way to advertise your yeah. business. They're much, they're noticeable. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Just the question I had, though, you didn't answer it. Is each of our buildings considered a principal building? That's a, that's a, it's a industrial. I uh, know. Two, I know. You know, yeah. it's like a you know, building. It's not building codes, I think we are separate buildings. But, you know, Green County Building Department has viewed it different ways sometimes, too. Yeah. So. Do you and use one structure? Well, they're connected. But they are separate yeah, but they're buildings. Separate. They have so they, they have diff they have separate um, uh, occupants. Yeah. So isn't there something about um, multi-tenant buildings? Yeah, well, there is something in the beginning um, of that one talks about principal buildings. Lots. What it talks yeah. about. Lots. Yeah. yeah, but you would think that I mean, I can look into it even further. Um, yeah, because I know, you know, yeah. I, I know, if it was all on one big lot, then the answer might be no. But I mean, I don't know. We'll just have to look at that more. Oh, well, we got yeah. the big lot, but three acres, you know. So. But you probably, by Green County standards, may have considered separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it gets it gets tangled. Yeah. You know, the, when you're dealing with them, there's so many regulations. Yeah. It's really tough to sort it out. Yeah, yeah if we can meet, let's do Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Because I, I wonder why the <coughs> person didn't come back, and I thought, well, you know, we're still, pen, we're still pending. We're trying to work something out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have no old business. Agenda planning. I guess we're going to revisit this at some point. <coughs> motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. It's good. No, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>